And hey, today I want to talk about a, a quick little topic. I was I spent the afternoon flying today traveling, and one thing that was on my mind was um, we work with a lot of investors that are buying short-term rentals right now, and I want to just bring a couple things to the surface here and kind of what you need to know about short-term rentals. Rentals. If you're living in a busy city that attracts a lot of visitors, or maybe some place that has a high season for tourists, you've probably considered buying an investment property and renting that as a short-term vacation rental. So buying a property with the intent of being a short-term vacation rental, it's just a great way to break into the investment properties, especially if you're buying, like I said, in a location that maybe your family might enjoy as that destination. Airbnb has by far been the most successful site, but in the past few years, it's just been a flurry of competitors such as VRBO, Tripping.com, and home to go and other recent uh, emergers in that market. While the nightly rate, what I want to talk about is why the nightly rate for a short-term rental is typically almost always higher than that, um, than the property would rent for a long-term tenant, a month-to-month -month would pay for that same period. Sometimes it doesn't always make sense to um, rent short-term. So I want to point out a couple things to consider. The most un undeniable advantage of a short-term rental is the diversity of renters. With long-term rentals, ideally you'll have financially stable tenant who pays on time, lives in your unit for a very long time. But the reality is if your renter has a job loss, COVID, uh, another COVID uh, uh, outbreak, right? Uh, some sort of a financial setback, you could experience a sudden loss of income on that property and it might set you back for short, short term, medium term. Um, so you can have to dip into those cash reserves that you might have. Hopefully you have. Um, the advantage of a short term rental is that you never really depend on one specific person to cover your income. With short term rentals, your nightly weight will always be higher than that um, that you could get or charge for a year round or month to month tenant. So just a quick example, I ran some numbers in Seattle. The average apartment rents about $2,000 a month, and the average Airbnb charges about $150 a night. If you're able to keep that unit occupied every night, you'd have about $4,500 a month income on that property. But that's a big if. In average, uh, you want to be conservative, right? You want to run your numbers and calculate and be on the conservative side. Let's say you are only able to keep that property occupied 75% of the time, using that metric, that Airbnb would yield you about $3,300 a month, which is still better than $2,000 a month if you rented it month to month. But just bear in mind, these there's some expenses that typically are not talked about. And some of the expenses that short-term rentals um, incur that the landlords do not incur, you have to pay for utilities, Wi-Fi, cable bill, including all the furniture, kitchenware, bedding, and anything else that might need to be there in that property for an Airbnb tenant to have in that property. Towels, all the stuff, toilet paper, some things you don't think about, right? Another issue to consider is whether your city allows short-term rentals and what regulations are in place. So in my area, in Eugene, Oregon, the city council has recently adopted an ordinance that requires all short-term rentals in the city to register annually. So that's just at this point, right? No telling what type of regulation they might have in the future, and that's still being determined. So beyond city guidelines, there's a lot of HOAs that have rules about short-term rentals. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, what obviously happens with short-term rentals, you get a lot of family members, uh, partying, uh, events, all that kind of stuff. So keep in mind noise violations with your HOA, neighbors complaining. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is you have to turn off that property. So you have to clean up. Somebody's got to come in there, change the towels, bedding, vacuum, and get that property turned over and ready for the next tenant. So you can either do that yourself or you can hire someone that would take care of that for you. Bottom line, it's going to cut into your uh, bottom line. So ultimately, the most important aspect of short-term rentals is just the demand needs to be there. And not every market can support year-round short-term rentals. So look for areas that have a lot of uh, year-round tourist activities. Colleges are obviously the best um, city to do that in. So even if you're based in a community with high demand, 
It can still take a while for that short-term rental to gain a customer base and gain traction. So make sure you have enough reserves, enough capital in your account to get you by the lean months. That being said, I hope you like this video. If you do, hit the like button below and subscribe. 